a generation today where the competition because of social media there is such a such a big focus on trying to be better than somebody else trying to compete trying to be uh, something that we are not and, and I want to make an apology right now because in previous years of my ministry and preaching I have made fun of chickens I have glorified eagles and I have said statements like you know be an eagle don't be a chicken and then I did some studying and I realized that actually eagles produce only two eggs a year chickens 260 and I have never, eagles have never provided an egg for my breakfast. I've been to quite a few restaurants but I've never seen an eagle meat on the menu. So I just want to apologize to all the chickens and to say chickens continue to be the best chicken that you can be. Because eagles, yes they can soar but they can produce eggs. Because eagles, yes they're beautiful and they're noble but honestly nobody eats their meat. So I just want to challenge each one you never try to be the next this or that be the first you God is not interested in making you better than another person he wants you to be better than you touch your neighbor say be better than you don't try to be better than me try to just be better than you God is not competing God wants to make us complete before we talk about the cure I just want to show you just a little difference between what insecurity is and what identity is. Insecurity is into titles. Identity is into towels. Jesus was in the Last Supper and the scripture says the disciples were bickering. Who's gonna be first? They wanted the title. Who's gonna sit at the right hand? Who's gonna sit at the left? Who's gonna be closer to Jesus? Because see when you are insecure you always need a title. And if title is taken away from you, your life is taken away from you. People who have their identity anchored in Jesus, they can do just fine without a title because they're looking for opportunity to serve. Insecurity is into competing. Identity is complete. Insecurity focuses on weight. Identity focuses on worth. Insecurity looks in the bathroom mirror to see who they are. Identity looks in the mirror of God's Word to be defined who they are. Insecurity is always jealous. Identity is always joyful. Insecurity is focused on issues. Identity is focused on intimacy. Insecurity is always into self-pity. Identity is into self-care. Insecurity lives out labels that people put on them. Identity lives out of love that God gives them. Insecurity like Adam hides from God but people in identity they hide in God. Insecurity feels abandoned. Identity walks as though they're adopted by God. And lastly, insecurity leads to idolatry. Identity leads to inheritance. Somebody say, Amen. I want to encourage you today that if perhaps you're dealing with insecurity in your life. There is a solution for that. And the solution is we're going to right now look at the scripture that we've read. God tells Adam. He puts him in the garden of Eden and says out of every tree in the garden I want you to eat but one tree tree of knowledge of good and evil don't eat of that tree just leave that tree alone tree of life was there in the middle of the garden but there was also all trees other trees good trees that God told him to eat of and there was one tree in the garden that was the tree of knowledge of good and evil I want you to notice it wasn't called the tree of death it wasn't called the tree of Satan. It wasn't called the tree of sin. It was the tree of knowledge of good and evil. We don't know how the tree got there. I heard one preacher explain it and according to Matthew 13 that while they slept the Satan sowed the seed and how the tree came. Like God slept and everybody slept and Satan came in. I don't know how that tree, that's one of the questions we're gonna ask in heaven. How did God or whoever put the tree in there? But the fact remains there was that tree, one tree, but there was hundreds of other trees God said to eat off of. Write this down. The first thing that I want you to remember out of this message today is this, is you will always have a reason to feel insecure. And even when you do, you will have a choice not to feed on your insecurities. You will have a reason to feel insecure. But you have a choice not to feed 
your insecurity. Adam had a tree in the garden of knowledge of good and evil. You and I also have a tree in our garden. It's something that is there that you might not be able to remove it. You might not be able to change it. And if you give focus to it, you think about it too much, it will make you feel inferior, not good enough, unworthy, ashamed, ugly, you don't measure up, you're worse than other people. The way Adam did, he felt ashamed, he felt afraid, he felt fearful. In fact, those feelings led him to start creating some clothes. And even those clothes didn't fix those bad feelings that he started to hide from God. That's what this tree does. And maybe you have something in your paradise today. Perhaps that tree is your physical appearance. There's nothing you can do to change it. Perhaps it's something that happened a long time ago. Something that someone has said. You cannot undo that. And that thing today causes you to feel that. That thing doesn't cause you to feel that. The tree didn't make him feel ashamed. It's eating from the tree that made him feel ashamed. The tree doesn't make you feel ashamed. It's eating from the tree that brings guilt, shame and insecurity. In my case, when I was younger, as a teenager, you know, when I was born, they said that something happened during the birth where one of the optical nerves was damaged and I was born and as a child, everything was fine. But then later on, when I was age five or six, they started to notice that one of my eyes was different than the other. Now, when you're a little kid, like, like a baby or a toddler, and you're fat, your eyes are like different, nobody cares right have you ever looked at the kid and said that's a that's the ugliest kid I've ever seen in my life no you see some of these kids like six roll they're like oh this is so cute this is so awesome and you look at there like no, this is not cute that thing is fat but when you're a kid there's no such a thing as fat you're just cute until you're age five and then you're not cute you're pleasantly plump and then you hit 11 you're not pleasantly plump you're fat you hit 13 and then you get bullied for the very thing you got called cute at the age of 13 you're bullied for and that's what kind of started to happen to me in the Ukraine I was bullied I was made fun of was called with labels partially because of my eyes when we immigrated to the United States all of those things that were spoken about me and then I kept looking in the mirror I started to feel the same thing that Adam felt I felt inadequate I felt I wasn't good enough and I felt all of those things and I had a tree in my garden this tree was called my physical appearance. It wasn't bad. Physical appearance is not a bad thing. Tree of knowledge wasn't a bad tree. The only thing that with this tree, God says you shouldn't eat of this tree. Don't remove it, just don't eat from it. But my problem was that I was eating from this tree. I allowed my physical appearance to determine who I was. And for the longest time, I had a difficult time to relate with people. I had a difficult time to even relate to God. I did very poorly in school. My grades were not good in school. I had a difficult time to, to even establish myself in the church and to do some things in the church because I felt like everybody rejected me. I felt like nobody wanted me. Nobody wanted close to me. And I felt like it was the world's fault. And all the shame and all the inadequacy that I felt, little did I knew it wasn't because there was a tree in my garden. It was that I was eating of the tree that produced the feelings I was feeling. What, what does that mean? Let, let me just make it simple for you. I was allowing my body to determine who I am before God. And when I started to, when I stopped eating from the tree of knowledge, the tree of my physical appearance, and I started eating from a lot of other trees, I started to feel different. I still have the tree of knowledge in my garden. You're looking at it. But I'm a different guy today. I'm not a different guy because I'm better. It's not because the temptation is no longer there. I have other temptations that are as strong as that one. But the principle remains the same. There will be things in your garden that you cannot remove. You can fix and you can change. But you are commanded by God not to eat of that tree. Let me just while I'm at this, to remind those people who use their body as a source of their identity. Remember, your body is important to God. God created it, Jesus healed it, the Holy Spirit indwells in it. God one day will resurrect it and reward everything that's done in the body. With all of that said, your body came from dirt. You came from God. Anytime you let your body be the foundation of your identity, you will feel dirty. 
your body will go back to dirt it's just the skin stretched over the skeleton but who you are you're made in the image and likeness of God